All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about acids and bases, okay? And I know sometimes the term acids um, sounds kind of scary, you know, and I think that's just probably due to um, the media or a lot of TV shows and stuff like that. But um, a lot of acids are very uh, much so necessary for life. So like, for example, ascorbic acid, um, it's vitamin C, all right? Citrus acid, a lot of acids that we get in fruits are really good for us. All right, and so um, we're going to look at actually several different definitions of acids and bases, all right? And so the first one um, we're going to um, explore, it's um, basically Cervantes Arrhenius, all right? So uh, we're going to look at Arrhenius definitions of acids and bases, all right? And so they are. So let's kind of start off with Arrhenius acids, right? So Arrhenius acid is a substance that produces hydrogen ions or hydronium ions when dissolved into water. All right, so hydronium is specifically H3O plus. So that's hydronium ions. Hydrogen ions are just hydrogen plus. So as any substance, when it's dissolved into water, it will either produce hydronium ions or hydrogen ions. So like here's a good example. So let's just say we have... HCl, right? If HCl dissolves in water, all right, or it reacts with water, what's going to happen is that it's going to make H3O plus or hydronium and this chloride ion, all right? And so this substance here is the Arrhenius acid, all right? Why is it the Arrhenius acid? Because this substance will produce hydronium when it's dissolved into water, all right, or hydrogen ions. So this um, substance, we call it hydrochloric acid, all right. So all in all, um, this is an Arrhenius acid, all right. So let's look into Arrhenius base. So an Arrhenius base is a substance that produces hydroxide ions when dissolved into water, okay. And so let's look at an example. So let's just say we're talking about ammonia, right? NH3, okay? And if it was to mix with water, all right, um, react with water, what we're gonna find is that it will produce an ammonium, all right, um, and hydroxide. So here's your hydroxide ion. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that ammonia all right, NH3 is your Arrhenius base because when you mix this base with water, it's going to produce hydroxide. All right, and this hydroxide, the presence of this hydroxide is gives us the idea that we have um, we have an Arrhenius base. Now, um, when it comes to Arrhenius definitions of acids and bases, it only applies to substances um, in which um, takes place within an aqueous solution, or it applies substances when it when it reacts or when it dissolves into water. All right. Now there is a far more general definition of acid base or different definition of acid bases that. Um, constitutes more different types of substances and different types of mixtures or different types of chemical reactions. All right. And this definition was proposed um, back in 1923 by Danish chemist uh, Johannes Bronsted and English chemist Thompson Lowry. All right. And so we call this the Bronsted Lowry definitions of acids and bases. All right. So let's just kind of jump into it and so that we can see exactly um, how they described what is an acid and what is a base. So a bronsted Lowry acid is basically any substance that is able to give up a hydrogen ion or H plus to another molecule or ion. All right. And so when we're talking about hydrogen ion, um, well, let's make sure we understand the difference between a hydrogen atom and a hydrogen ion. Right. So a hydrogen atom basically consists of you have a proton and then it has an electron. So this is the hydrogen atom and hydrogen ion in this case here, just consists of a proton, all right? There's no electron. So it's just a, a proton transfer. And so this is the reason why oftentimes Bronsted-Lowry, we typically call it the Bronsted-Lowry acid, I'm sorry. We keep we, we, we oftentimes say that Bronsted-Lowry acid is a proton 
donor, right? Because a proton is essentially a hydrogen ion, okay? All right, so, uh, Bronston Lowry, Lowry acid is just any substance that, that, that um, donates a proton, okay? Now, there's different types of acids that, you know, are able to donate um, different numbers of, of protons, right? And we give them very specific names. So, like, you know, like, for example, you have HCl, right? HCl, hydrochloric acid, only has one H here. And so we say that this is a a monoprotic acid, all right? Um, mono being one, pro, protic, monoprotic, protic like proton, right? So someone like proton just gives you that it's one hydrogen ion, one proton that's able to um, that's able to donate, right? Another example we have like um, NO three. HNO3, right? So that's nitric acid. So nitric acid looks like this. Um, it's a Lewis structure, right? And so there's only one H here, all right? So this is an H that's able to donate, okay? So this is also a monoprotic acid, all right? Now you have something like sulfuric acid. So here is the Lewis structure for sulfuric acid, and you see that it has the ability to donate two H's, all right? So this makes this acid diprotic. Di meaning two. Remember, protic is protons, okay? So it's able to give off two protons. Um, you have phosphoric acid. So phosphoric acid consists of, so here is the Lewis structure, all right, consists of three hydrogens, all right? So that makes this substance a triprotic acid. Tri being there are three protic, saying there are three protons or three hydrogen ions. So one of the key things I want you to notice here is that in order for H or for hydrogen ion to be considered to be like a, an acidic hydrogen, I, I guess that's that's the way I want to put it, right? Or hydrogen atoms are typically that donated as protons. These hydrogens will have to be bonded to a highly electronegative atom here. All right. And so um, this hydrogen, if you notice, is uh, bonded to this highly electronegative elect uh, chlorine. Um, this hydrogen is bonded to high, um, highly electronegative oxygens, all right? And same thing here. So that's what makes these hydrogens more likely to be donated because they are bonded to a highly electronegative atom, okay? So for an example, like when we think about organic substances where there are just tons of hydrogens, right? So it's like, oh, how do you know if it's an acid or not, right? Well, it has to be... An acid would consist of a hydrogen that is bonded to a highly electronegative atom. So here's an example. We have acetic acid, okay? Acetic acid is an organic compound, all right? Consists of, basically it is um, C2H3OH, all right? So that's a way to write it. But if you were to draw its Lewis structure, it would look something like this, all right? You have the two Cs. You have the three H's here. You have a double bonded O, another O with the oxygen, and then you have this hydrogen. So the acidic hydrogen is this one here. All right, and so this is the hydrogen that's most likely is going to be donated. All right, and as I said, when you think about the Bronsted-Lowry um, definition of acid, it's a proton donor. So let's kind of look at this um, at, a, at a chemical reaction of this so that we, you can see the process of why we call it a proton donor. So let's just say this acidic acid, it's going to react with water. All right. And so we have water here. So acidic acid plus H2O. All right. What's it going to yield? Well, remember, this is an acid. So the acid um, the acidic acid is going to donate the hydrogen, right? 
um, the donate the proton. Who is it going to donate the proton to? Well, it's going to donate it to the other substance, to the other reactant. All right, so this hydrogen is going to be donated to water. All right, and so what's it going to yield? What's it going to make? Well, now water is going to take up this extra hydrogen here. And so what's going to happen is that now it's going to form your hydronium ion, H3O plus, okay, plus, and now you're going to have this acidic acid without the, the H part. All right. And so I'm going to draw this here. Oh, I should move this to the side. Um, and where you're going to have C, C, your three H's, double bond O, and then we got an O here. And so now what we have here is C, two, H, three, O, negative. Now we have the acetate ion. Okay. And so now we see that here is this hydrogen all right and so now we see that the acidic acid had donated the hydrogen to the water all right now the water now has become a hydronium ion and then you have the acetate ion so this is what it means that the hydrogen is going to be donated all right or a the the proton is donated all right so this makes um acidic acid the acid all right, so whereas the Bronze de Lowry base is basically a substance that accepts the hydrogen ion or the proton from the acid, all right? And so the good example of this is like um, ammonia, all right, NH3, um, and let's say that it reacts with water, all right? It's going to, I was going to make NH4 plus plus hydroxide, all right? And let's kind of draw the Lewis structure that we can see exactly what's going on here. All right, so we have ammonia that has an NH3. So here is ammonia, all right? Now, uh, a good kind of indication that, you know, it might be a base, we have, you know, these lone pairs here, all right? So that kind of gives us a spot where the hydrogen is going to bond to, okay? And then we have water, right? So in this case, water is going to act like an acid. All right, it has these two hydrogens essentially that is bonded to this a highly electronegative atom, right? And so, what's going to happen? Well, water is going to be the proton acceptor. I mean, water is going to be the proton donor. I'm sorry, and so it's going to donate the hydrogen to this ammonium here. All right, so ammonia, not ammonium, ammonia, NH3, is going to accept the hydrogen. And so because it's going to accept the hydrogen, it's going to be the bronston lowry base. While water, actually in this case, is going to be the bronston lowry acid, all right, because it's given up a hydrogen, it was given up a proton, and then ammonia is going to take in the proton. All right, and so what happens is now you have essentially N ammonium ion because now it has accepted the hydrogen and then lastly you see that the water now has become a hydroxide ion this one has a charge as well all right and so so here we have the hydroxide here we have the ammonium ion Okay, and we see that ammonia, our NH3, has accepted the hydrogen or the has accepted the proton as the proton acceptor, and so thus it is considered to be the Bronsted Lowry base. Now, Bronsted Lowry um, acid base reactions doesn't need to have to happen in water all right and that's kind of like the biggest difference between the bronston lowry's definitions of acid base and Arrhenius definitions of acid bases while Arrhenius definition of acid bases must take place in aqueous solutions on water bronston lowry's definitions of acid bases doesn't need to all right and so like here's just an uh, example of this where you have nh3 
reacts with HCl and what's going to happen is that you're going to have NH4 plus plus Cl negative all right and so if you draw the Lewis structure now you don't necessarily need a Lewis structure to kind of tell what's going on um, but I guess that visual piece is really kind of helps so first I'm going to kind of show it um, how you could easily tell if something's an acid or base without having to draw the Lewis structure then I will just kind of draw the Lewis structure so for those you know who um, it really helps right and so typically what you want to kind of pay attention to is just the substance within the compounds that are not hydrogens on both sides right and so for example we have this nitrogen here on both sides and then we have the chlorines here on both sides all right and then what you want to do is compare and contrast to see what happens to the number of hydrogens on both sides right and so like for example if you look here on the NH3 we got three H's right and the, for the NH4 we got four H's so we could clearly see over the reaction um, N8 the N has gained one more hydrogen that nitrogen gains this nitrogen gains one more hydrogen so in this case if it gains hydrogen or it gains the proton in this case this is your base okay and then when we look at it if we look at chlorine here, all right, chlorine from here to here, we see that chlorine um, goes from one hydrogen and it goes to zero hydrogen. So it ends up losing hydrogen. So if it lost a hydrogen, then that means HCl will be your acid. Now, the cool thing when it comes to Bronsted Lowry definitions of acids and bases, one substance is a acid the other substance is a base <laughs> all right and acid bases are typically you always typically see them on the reactant side okay now a couple of things i want to note with this when nh or when the nitrogen gains a hydrogen uh, it gains a hydrogen ion now anytime we refer to ions you know we're talking about the charge right so this one it gains um, H plus so if you notice that overall NH3 is neutral and NH4 is a plus one because it gains a plus one charge when it also gains that proton and so it's also important that you, um, when writing the chemical equations to these you have to put that into consideration right and much like the Cl here right and so this is a neutral compound, right? And it loses, um, or it, it lose an H plus, it loses a plus one charge. And so thus, that's why it's a Cl negative. All right, so it's really important that um, you kind of keep that in mind as um, you're transferring hydrogens from one substance to the next, as an acid's losing and it so it loses a plus one charge and when a base gains it gains a plus one charge okay now this is your base this is your acid the acid the cl all right and it's for naming purposes all right when an acid loses its hydrogen it becomes what we call the conjugate base all right when the base gains the hydrogen it becomes what we call the conjugate acid all right why do we give it these names oh well um and like when you think about uh what's going on oftentimes you know these reactions are in equilibrium meaning that the Ford re reaction and the reverse reactions are true like so if you see here I show that you have a double-sided arrow, so this is an equilibrium. Now, um, and so because it's an equilibrium, that means the reverse reaction can also take place. And then if the reverse reaction can take place, all right, what we're gonna have is that the Cl here, all right, is going to act like a base when we're going in reverse. All right, if it's if you're moving the reaction towards the left, if we're going towards the left here, we will see that the Cl then would gain a hydrogen to become HCl. So thus it acts like a base. 
and then NH4 um, plus is going to act like an acid because it's going to give up a hydrogen to the Cl to become NH3 again. So this is the reason why we call it the conjugate base conjugate acid. All right. And so what happens is that in ultimately is typically the case. The base will become the conjugate acid while the acid will become the conjugate base all right and thus where we have what we call a a conjugate acid base pairs all right and so you could kind of easily quickly figure out what will be the conjugate um counterpart if you know if it's an acid or if it's a base right and so like nh3 all right, since we said that's the base, if we want to know, okay, what is the conjugate acid of NH3? Well, we know NH3 is a base. The base is going to gain a hydrogen, so it's going to be NH4 plus, okay? While if we're talking about HCl, which we know that HCl is an acid, and we want to know what's the conjugate base pair, all right, well, if HCl is an acid and it loses a hydrogen, well, the conjugate base will be simply be a Cl negative.